Welcome to another tutor short provided by the Educational Support Services Department of Lehigh Carbon Community College in Snexville, Pennsylvania, which is just outside of Allentown. These videos review key learnings for the science courses provided here at LTRIC. And please remember that the Educational Support Services Department does provide walk in tutoring five days a week. Today's video will review projectile motion. This is when we have objects moving through the air in two dimensions near the Earth's surface. I just previously did a video uh, involving objects moving through the air in one dimension. Uh, uh, for projectile motions, we're just extending that to two directions. Uh, we're going to assume, as we did before, that there is no air resistance or wind acting on this projectile, and that G is constant at 9.8 meters per second squared. For these problems, we're not concerned about how the object is thrown or projected, just its motion after it has been projected and just before it lands. That means we're only dealing with it moving freely in the air under the action of gravity only. When we apply these assumptions, we can reduce the kinematic equations of motions into the following forms. So we're going to be, these are the uh, equations that uh, you have. Remember that we're, we're going to assume that y is positive in the upward directions. That acceleration in an x direction is going to be zero. And we only have acceleration in the y direction, as we said, which is gravity. And if we set, you know, our axis like this, y is positive up, x is this way, these are your zero points. Then um, g is going to be a minus 9.8 meters per second squared. It'll act in the opposite direction of our positive y. The x direction then essentially reduces to these three equations. Um, the velocity, because there, uh, or the assumption here is there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction. Your initial velocity and your final velocity is the same. Uh, show here on the right. This velocity, whatever the x component is in the um, horizontal direction, never changes. It stays constant because we're assuming there's no air resistance or wind affecting uh, that velocity. And so that we do reduce down to just these three equations. Uh, basically, your velocity stays the same, and how far you travel is really just dependent on your initial velocity and the time. Um, but from the vector point of view here, because our angle of theta, let me change this over here so you can see, this is our velocity vector. It's up at an angle. And this angle is theta. And your x direction um, down here, if we look down here again, the component for velocity in the x direction is going to be a, um, a factor of the cosine of the theta. Cosine meaning adjacent uh, to the theta angle. And so um, to get your x uh, component for velocity, you would take your vector velocity and uh, factor it by the cosine of theta. So then, if I clean this up a bit, we talk now about the y direction. Now we do have an influence of acceleration, which would be g. So we take our kinematic equations and look at it only in the y direction. It reduces to these equations. And as I just mentioned for the x in the y direction, the um, y component of your velocity is going to be sine of your theta degrees, uh, which is your angle off of the x-axis. So. In most courses, your teacher will provide you with these equations. They normally don't require you to memorize all the kinematic equations and their variations. 
Uh, so what you need to get familiar with is how to use these equa uh, equations and be proficient in doing that. Now, I use this diagram here um, that I found. It uh, is helpful to be thinking about what's occurring during your projectile motion. And if I use, let me use a red pen. You're starting here, starting at this point. You normally we can set that to, you know, 0x and 0y uh, point. But um, this is the velocity that you're um, setting your projectile into motion with. And you can see, I'll use blue here, your components here in the y direction and your x direction uh, is uh, the component parts of that initial vector. And you have an angle of theta off the horizon that you, use, uh, that you set this projectile into motion with. So you start out with a, an x and a y. And if I take some point up here, a few seconds after the projectile has been released. Um, the X component is not changing. It's staying the same. But your Y component, because gravity has been uh, working against that Y direction, your Y component, as it's going up this curve, is getting smaller and smaller because gravity is reducing that velocity. Until you reach your peak. This would be your peak represented sign by H for height, your peak height. At this point your velocity now is zero in the y direction. Gravity has reduced that velocity down to zero and now you're going to start falling um, uh, from that point. And as I mentioned a couple of times already and will continue to mention your velocity in the x direction is not changing. It's still going in the horizontal direction at the same speed or same velocity. Once you reach your peak, now you're starting to come down. Again, your x stays the same. But now your y is starting to uh, grow in the downward direction. Now gravity is helping that uh, projectile uh, speed up and increase its velocity in the downward direction until you hit the ground at this point down here. Now this isn't drawn as well as the initial point over here. It should be it should look exactly the same only in the opposite direction. So your X doesn't look too bad. It looks like it's still the same size. But this Y actually should be a little bit longer when you compare it over here with this Y. But just at the point here where you hit the ground, what's important to realize is that your Y is now going to be, your Y component of your uh, vector here is going to be equal to your initial uh, velocity in the Y direction, only now it's in the opposite direction. It's heading down instead of uh, up. And that's a, a part of symmetry involved in projectile motion that sometimes can help you skip right to the answer uh, without having to do any uh, calculations uh, to, to realize there's a symmetry involved and that your initial velocity in the y direction is equal to your final velocity in the y direction, only it's in the opposite uh, direction. Uh, again, your x velocity never changes. And you now have a distance that you've traveled um, uh, for this projectile. And um, that's another factor that you'll sometimes uh, be asked to calculate. But since this is strictly in the horizontal direction, this uh, distance that you travel is only dependent on your velocity in your x direction. There is no acceleration involved. So the equation, as we showed you before, in the x direction there's, uh, are pretty simplified. There's only uh, really, let's go back and just take a look. You really only have, you know, really three equations that you'll deal with. 
uh, for the x direction. So finding the distance traveled is not too hard uh, to determine. Uh, again, something to up here as sort of a shortcut. Uh, sometimes a teacher will ask you just a, um, a thought question. Uh, you're going to get your maximum height, this distance to the peak of your um, curve here. You would get your maximum height if your angle, this is theta off of the horizon, if this angle here was 90 degrees. Essentially, if you kick that football uh, or whatever you're dealing with straight up in the air, so all of your velocity vector is just pointed straight up, that's when you will get your highest uh, height. So at theta equal 90 is where you would get your maximum height that could be done. Um, your maximum distance, however, is um, if you work through your equations, you'll see that re ends up being at 45 degrees. So if you kick the f uh, a football or throw a baseball or some kind of projectile at 45 degrees, that's going to give you your maximum uh, distance on that projectile uh, relative to the horizontal. Uh, so that'll be something that, you know, uh, I keep saying kicking because I'm, I'm going to quickly jump to a um, example problem of kicking a football. Uh, but, you know, if that punter is trying to get the ball the farthest distance that he can, he's going to shoot for that 45 degree angle when he kicks the uh, football. And if he's uh, looking for more height, he want, um he has to increase that angle, but he has to be careful as, as he increases the angle above 45, his height will go up, but his distance is going to go down. So he's got to be careful. So um, I believe that's all the points I wanted to make just generically on uh, projectile motion. Let's go and do an example. So let's suppose a football is kicked at 20 meters per second at 37 degrees from the ground. And what we're looking for is what is the maximum height are we going to achieve and how far away is this football going to hit the ground. So the first thing we want to do is to set our uh, axis, our vector and angle. So we're going to set our zero points down here. This is going to be our y-axis in the positive direction. This will be our x-axis in the positive direction. So the angle we have here is 37 degrees. And we said that this vol the initial vector, velocity vector here, uh, we can call it v, I guess. That initial vector is 20 sorry, 20 meters per second. So that's what we're starting with. And the first part of the question, maximum height, when you think about your kinematic equations that you have for projectile motion, the height involved is strictly looking at our y direction. So we're just going to look at our kinematic equations in the y direction and see which ones uh, we can use to get us uh, to this uh, height that we're looking for. So the first thing when I took a look, there was an equation involving uh, the angle, in this case 37 degrees, that if we take our uh, velocity vector and we adjust it by the sine of 37 degrees, we're going to get our initial velocity in the y direction. And we work that through here and we get 12 meters per second. So now we know our initial velocity kind of here this velocity in the y direction initially is 12 meters per second. Now knowing that take a look at this t uh, kinematic equation that um, we have. I do know the v equals y zero and I also know I know what g is but I also know what the initial velocity, um, sorry, the final velocity is in the y direction, 
when we get to the peak, when we reach the top of that um, curve, we are no longer, uh, we, knew, we no longer have any velocity in the y direction. So it's going to be equal to zero. So knowing that the g, the initial velocity in the y direction, and your final velocity in the y direction, we can solve for t, and we'll see that that t equals 1.22 seconds. So that's how long it takes to get to the peak. The reason we wanted to calculate that is because we needed another uh, um, solved variable so that then we can go ahead and use this equation, the third equation here, in order to get our y final, which is the peak that we're looking for. So this height, let me erase this here so we can show it. This peak height here, uh, because we're starting at zero point on the bottom, is going to equal to your y final. Um, if we use our t of 1.22 seconds, which is how long it takes to get to that peak. So looking back at this e equation here, um, we know our vy0, we know our t, so we know this t here, we know g. Um, we still have a, something to input though is y0, but we know what that is, that's set to zero. We already said that and we set our axis that our initial y uh, starting point was at zero. So plugging all that in, we'll end up with a peak height here of 7.35 meters. So in this case, in order to solve for the maximum height, we had to go through and use three of the kinematic equations. Uh, systematically one at a time so that we can get to what we were looking for the y final. Now for the second part of the equation how far away uh, does the football go before it hits the ground uh, we're looking for um, essentially this distance here and that's it's going to be uh, the point it hits here is the final x and we know we're starting at zero uh, for x because we set the axis that way. To get to that answer, um, when I looked at the kinematic equations, I looked at it and said, well, I can get there with using just two equations. The first one is to determine the x component of the initial velocity. And we just take our velocity vector times a cosine of 37. You work that out and you get 16 meters per second squared. And as I mentioned before, that 16 meters per second, squ uh, not squared, sorry, 16 meters per second continues through the whole time. There's nothing slowing that down. We're making an assumption of no air resistance or wind or anything. And so that stays constant. So the next kinematic equation, we, when we resolve it down, uh, actually this far here, this equation. We get xf equals x0 plus vx0 times t. Uh, t in this case um, is the length of time it takes to get all the way to the end. And um, that is twice your initial t that we calculated time to the peak. Again, as we talked about the uh, symmetry of these curves, if it takes 1.22 seconds to reach the peak up here takes another 1.22 seconds to reach the ground again because this is a symmetric curve and so our time here is 2.44 we know our x0 starts at 0 and so uh, we have calculated our vx0 so now we can solve for xf and if you work out the uh, calculations you'll get to 39 meters is how far the football will go. So this is just one example you'll be doing a bunch more for your homework um, but uh, these problems uh, basically involve you uh, understanding what's going on during um, projectile motion, looking at your kinematic equations and using some of the symmetry sometimes to 
help you skip ahead, um, save you some calculations when you uh, realize what the symmetry uh, provides for you. And um, you just have to get proficient in uh, dealing with these equations and uh, being comfortable with picking and choosing the ones that will get you to where you need to go. Thank you.